Welcome back. This is your daytime update on Newsroom Africa, Channel 405. Now, a lot of industries, a lot of individuals have been adversely affected by COVID-19 and the lockdown. But the South African tourism and hospitality industry really does continue to be incredibly hard hit by the negative impact of a COVID-19 lockdown. Let's talk now to a business owner in the sector, Ms. Caroline Nake. She owns a and b in Mpumalanga. Uh, a very good afternoon to you, Menake, and, and thank you for your time. How have you been? How have you survived this lockdown? Good evening. Good evening, viewers. Uh, it is uh, bad, but you know what? We do have that hope. And our government, since the lockdown, more special for us, in this industry, for me, per se, in Malof Park, we are depending on the tourists, which are from outside the country. So it has affected us big time. Because at the moment, there's no tourist that is coming to South Africa. I mean, the, the last time uh, when we spoke, you were focusing on the reopening of the international borders and you were actually quite hopeful that this will in some way invigorate the uh, tourism accommodation industry. Are you saying that this has not made an impact at all? It, it didn't make an impact at all since the borders have closed, since now for this second wave. We have seen the cancellation, the uh, flights, they've canceled the flight from outside to South Africa, and then our businesses are hit a uh, big, big time. We are affected about this pandemic. And then it's not only for me, for the whole uh, world, on our industry, it hit us big time. And, because and we're hoping that now, since the uh, opening of the borders, we, we hope that after we open the borders, we'll see the internationals coming into South Africa, but it didn't work like that. Now we are facing the second wave. And, and as far as domestic tourism, uh, how much of an impact does that actually have on your business? How was your festive season uh, for last year, your December 2020? Uh, the festive season, we were busy. We were busy for me, Tiniko Krugalocha was uh, accommodating the essential workers. And then some of my uh, the establishment around my my um, uh, around my establishment every time when we're looking for the accommodation from them because i was fully booked they were also fully booked so to me it it looks like for december we're busy all of us were busy i don't know to some other provinces but here in malof park in bumalanga some of us were busy and, and as yeah. and as far as the financial year is, com is, is concerned. If you compare how much you made in December 2020 to how much you made in December uh, 2019, how, how does that compare? No, it won't be the same because 2019, we were busy from the start, from January until December. And then that thing started on, the, on, on um, uh, March. February, March to 2020. So we were busy because we did make money from January until uh, the start of the lockdown. So for now, it was 2020, it was only for that time of the December time because people, they were up, uh, uh, they were tired of staying at home. They were tired. They wanted to be on a holiday, which were, for me, Tinyiko is next to Kruger National Park next to Maputo border, next to Swaziland border. So I was having those clients from outside. And, and how do you... Wish they were going to Kruger National. And, and how do you anticipate this will roll out for the rest of the year? It looks like domestic tourism is a good opportunity for the accommodation industry and, and also for the neighboring uh, countries to be able to come in. I mean, even though the borders now have been closed, but do you think that this is a sustainable market uh, for your business? Yes, we have to be positive. We mustn't lose hope because even now our government are there, they are helping us. MTPA is there, they are doing the marketing for us. Our um, uh, 
a municipality. For now, since the lockdown, uh, my municipality, which is Ngomazi municipality, they didn't switch off water and electricity on my establishment. So we, we are hoping that with the um, domestic tourism, we are going to make it. We mustn't lose hope. All the establishment uh, owners out there, we mustn't lose hope. Restaurant and hotels, B&Bs, we mustn't lose hope. We'll make it. I mean, it, it's really comforting to hear that your particular establishment is really staying afloat during this time. But are you aware of any of your peers who perhaps may not have been um, as fortunate as you who have had to either scale down or, or close because of COVID-19 and the lockdown? Yes, uh, I know some of them which uh, they are not in um, um, Pumalanga. There are in Pumalanga, but we bank and then where municipality are closing water and electricity for them. Because at the moment, you cannot operate without water. You cannot operate without electricity. And then this is the thing that our government, we are, we are urging our government to help us, to help us by asking the, the, uh, our municipality, they mustn't uh, switch off water and electricity because it's, it, we're depending on, on, on this establishment. And then for us as um, the owners, we're hiring more people. And, th and then now when we retrench them, when we don't operate, when we don't operate our establishment, it means those people, they have to go and stay at home, which is they're adding the number of unemployment. So we are uh, asking our government to be there with us, help us. Our government here in Bumalanga now they um, give out, they give us uh, the small establishment ten million. I think all of Bumalanga people that they didn't even uh, get that fifty thousand from the previous. Now they can apply. There's ten million out there for all the Bumalanga at tourism establishment to apply. Thank you. You mentioned that uh, your municipality, Ngoma's municipality, has been quite supportive. The fact that the lights have not been turned off and the water has not been turned off. Did you manage to, or did you have to make some sort of an arrangement directly with them? And did they give you any concessions on monies that might be owing? Yes, um, you have to go to them. And then since the lockdown, for me, I, I, I went to them straight but it's not me only. Most of the establishment around Mpumalanga, around Nkomazi, they didn't switch water and electricity to them. It's not only Tiniko Kruger Lodge. Most of the establishment which falling under Nkomazi municipality, they didn't. So we are saying thank you to our uh, local municipality, which is Nkomazi. And our, our local government for giving us that 10 million. I hope most of the people, most of the establishment that they didn't receive that 50,000 from uh, the government, now they can uh, get something to pay their employees to, to pay some water and electricity, those who are affected, especially with bank and that side. Mm. Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing your personal story. Um, certainly one story that does give some hope um, that wherever you can negotiate with the, your municipality and the good news for you is that your municipality is quite understanding and working along with yourselves as well as others in the industry. Thank you so much for your time and continued success uh, with your business.